So we heard earlier this morning that Blake Griffin, they're working on a buyout with Blake Griffin, the Pistons, and Blake Griffin will be hitting free agency or waivers or whatever it technically is. I don't really think it matters. Let's talk about what could happen with Blake Griffin. And I guess we'll touch for a second on the Pistons. Uh, I mean, I think there's some very interesting things with the Pistons. I mean, that's a massive contract they just waived. I don't know how in the world they're going to manage to negotiate that one. But talking about places where Blake Griffin could go, uh, considering he's probably signing for the veteran minimum, he can go just about anywhere. And right now, seems like the leading candidates are the Lakers and the Nets, from what the media would like you to perceive. But personally, personally, in my opinion, I feel like the Suns are a clear front runner for Blake Griffin. I could be totally wrong, and we'll see what happens. But right now, it looks like the Phoenix Suns have the best shot at signing Blake Griffin. I'll break that down. I'll get into it. Um, before I do that, though, maybe click subscribe. Subscribe. I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers by the end of March, so every subscriber really counts. And. I don't know, other teams, if you're a good team, you're probably going to want Blake Griffin. Blake Griffin has really turned into a contributing asset, despite the fact he just, he's totally lost his athleticism. He's still able to hit the three ball. He's able to ball handle to an extent, still somewhat, uh, somewhat of a threat in the post, still can pass the ball. I mean, he's got a bunch of unique skills for his size, and I think he's a kind of yeah, he's a unique weapon, pretty much. You just plug him in. I don't know if he's particularly going to be the best player on the defensive end, but that offensive capability is really interesting. It can fit on any team that's trying to win. Sixers, Bucks. I already talked about the Nets, even the Celtics, the Knicks. I mean, if you're trying to win games, I think Blake Griffin, maybe he's not the guy who's at the forefront, but if he's playing on your bench and he's playing like 18 to 20 minutes a game, then you're getting a good contribution out of him. Uh, I was just naming Eastern Conference teams. I think legitimately anyone in the West would also be interested in Blake Griffin. I mean, Lakers is going to be the main one you hear a lot. I don't know about the Jazz. I don't really know if he fits the mold. I don't think the Clippers. Uh, I do have Clippers in the thumbnail. I realize I do have that. I think it's kind of it's kind of a little debate. I, I, I don't have any other way to say it. I feel like Blake Griffin thinks that the Clippers betrayed him by trading him away, and he thinks that the Clippers don't, he doesn't owe anything to the Clippers, so I really don't see for a reason for him to return. I do think there's a player he thinks he owes something to, and that's Chris Paul of the Phoenix Suns, and that's kind of why I think he's going to join the Suns. I mean, look at what the Suns are doing. They're currently sitting in second in the Western Conference. I don't want to predict the future, but they're going to be 24-11 and 11, uh, after this win tonight against the Warriors, and, you know, this team is just doing insanely well. They're the second best team in the NBA. Blake Griffin is really great friends with uh, Chris Paul, and we know that teams are liking the Suns, and they're seeing what the Suns are doing. They want to be a part of it. All right, players are interested in the Suns, not teams, and they're kind of like, this is pretty nice. This is interesting. This is going on. So if the Suns are willing to sign a guy like Blake Griffin, and I think they are, because Blake Griffin's a very talented player, it adds another solid big big to that rotation, and another great three-point shooter. Gotta keep talking about that. Um, I just wish he was better on the defensive end. He would give us a much better option to bring off the bench to guard Anthony Davis. Which, that's just the biggest issue for the Suns right now. It's literally this one matchup, and that's Anthony Davis. And I don't know if there's someone out there who exists who can really guard Anthony Davis one-on-one other than, like, Giannis and Bam. (laughs) And, I mean, those guys aren't exactly acquirable. So, I guess Blake Griffin can be your guy if you try to bring him in after DeAndre Aiden's in foul trouble. (laughs) I guess he can play solid. I mean, he's got a lot of experience. He's got a lot of minutes in the NBA, but he's not going to lock him down or anything. No one can lock down Anthony Davis. So, yeah, so that, that's that's trying to fix that matchup. And he also just brings veteran presence, three-point shooting, passing, playmaking. He plays to those strengths that, uh, honestly, right now the main issue is Cam Johnson. Uh I mean, he's not an issue, but he's just kind of, 
Uh, he just kind of gets laser focused into shooting threes, even though he's a really talented driving player. And he can pass and he can uh, hit mid-range. He can finish at the, at the rack. He just hasn't been particularly good at recognizing those situations. He's definitely had moments. But if you bring in a guy who's got a lot of experience, who's done this for a long, long time, who is going to be, I'm going to say, just a bit more clutch than Cam Johnson. I mean, Cam Johnson's a second-year player. So, okay, yeah, bring in a guy like Blake Griffin. He's just played so much more in the NBA. And he also fits that system of let's just attack the basket every single play and shooters get open. Uh, that's kind of what they've been doing with DeAndre Aiden off the court. So... Uh, sometimes yeah, earlier on in the season that was more prevalent but yeah I mean Blake Griffin just makes a lot of sense for the Suns over there on the Lakers adding in more front court depth seeing them run out Jared Dudley and Montrez Harrell against the Suns was kind of pitiful and I mean obviously that was a product of situation Cal Kuzma out Mark Gasol out but I think they could use a player like Blake Griffin and yeah, I mean, he'd be a great weapon for them as well. Uh, honestly, it feels like you're more more benefit uh, more benefiting on the fact that the Suns don't get him than actually having the value of Blake Griffin. But yeah, Blake Griffin, same things I've said. He can shoot threes, can pass that ball, can drive. It adds another offensive weapon to a Lakers team that's kind of struggling on the offensive end. Uh, I. Don't want to say like Taylor Horton Tucker is a bad player because you've heard me say multiple times that Taylor Horton Tucker is a great player. I think Taylor Horton Tucker, once again, second year player with a bunch of inexperience. He's a really dynamic player, but you bring in a solid guy like Blake Griffin, who's just going to hit his threes and drive to the rack when needed, uh, get a few good possessions in the post. And that's a game changer for the Lakers, who I know, once again, this is not going to happen every night where they're having those offensive issues. And once you get those players back, like Kyle Kuzma, like Anthony Davis, they're going to be a better offensive team. But bringing a guy like Blake Griffin, I feel like they could just use another offensive weapon. But it also feels like you already brought in a few offensive weapons who just aren't all the ways there yet. And Dennis Schroeder and Montrezl Harrell. So well, what we do have to ask, if he does sign with the Lakers, how does he incorporate himself? How well does that work? Uh, the Brooklyn Nets, small ball five. Well, not even a small ball five. He's like 6'9", 6 6'10". 6 uh, yeah, a guy can knock down threes. A bigger body than Jeff Green. <laughs> yeah, the Nets would sign this in an instant. Uh, I guess they'd probably wish for a better defensive player. Someone a bit more agile, I would say. Someone with a bit more hops at this point. He still, he still has some hops. He's of course, he has hops at this point. But, you know... They got that guy still. I think they have a few guys who can fill that need, like Nick Claxton and Reggie Perry, who can catch those oops and get it done. I mean, you also reunite Blake Griffin and DeAndre Jordan, which honestly, that's that's. I don't really think they're that great of friends, but yeah, I mean, that, that's an interesting pairing to bring back. But yeah, on the Nets. <laughs> Bringing in some size, bringing in some three-point shooting, potential small ball five, that makes a lot of sense. Th those are the th top three candidates for sure. Uh, I mean, of course, the Lakers and the Nets, uh, you, don't, you don't have to be an idiot to realize. Actually, I, I don't even know where that was going. Uh, basically, what I'm saying is it, it seems very likely it's going to be the Lakers and the Nets in the finals. So, you know, maybe turning one of those teams is his best chance of getting a win, uh, gain, gaining a ring, making it out of the second round for that. And yeah, yeah, Lakers and Nets. I, I do love my sons, but come on, it, it's the Lakers, it's the Nets. And yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Maybe click like, maybe click subscribe, maybe leave a comment. I don't know. Anyways, I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.